What is going on, nerds? Did somebody say Lords of Waterdeep Killer? Alright guys, so Meeples and Monsters. It's going to be on Kickstarter, so what you see here is a prototype, but to be honest, it is a fantastic prototype. And I do think that what you're going to see is going to be pretty similar to what I have on the table here. There may be some slight artwork differences, some component differences, but for the most part, this is what you are going to get. And what this is, is a bag building worker placement, like tower defense game. So there's, it's not really semi co-op at all. It is fully competitive, but the premise of the game is you have your, like your guild or your, your, um, you know, your bar here, you've got your tavern and you are going to have all of these workers that you start with a handful and then you get more and more and more as the game progresses and as you buy them and earn them and do all these stuff. And you are going to use these workers to one, build new spots on the board to go to, and then two, go to these spots on the board and that lets you level up, it lets you get special abilities, it lets you earn more workers to your, I'm gonna call it your guild, and then three, you are going to send out those workers to fight the monsters. So it definitely has that worker placement aspect to it where you are going to spike. There's, there's straight up worker placement in this game, but you're also assigning your workers to fight monsters. And you see all these different colors here. You've got your mage, your cleric, your knight, your warrior, and your peasant. Um, you start with a bunch of peasants and they really like, they're not super great at fighting and that they're, they're not terrible because a lot of people start at only one attack. But the thing they're best at is building because you can only build with a peasant. And you are going to be building these spots on the board. And as you're building these buildings, there are actually rewards for building it, whether that be new quests or new workers for your guild. And then as the game progresses, you're going to earn more and more workers of the different types. And again, they're each kind of specialized. You have your warriors that are good at fighting and your knights that are great at fighting and your mage and your clerics that are good at doing other things in the board. And again, you can fight with everybody, but the, the warrior and the knight are definitely the best at fighting. And with that fighting, there are these four zones on the board and there are monster slots in every single one. And you have a deck of monsters that is going to be getting progressively harder as the game goes on and they're going to get assigned to the different spots on the board and as the monsters stack up in these zones it changes a little bit of what happens there if you go to a place that has a lot of monsters in it you're actually going to be adding peasants to your guild because as your workers go to the places in that zone the peasants flock to them and then you gain them into your guild as well which in the beginning of the game is like fantastic because you want more workers, you want more, like you don't necessarily get more actions because I'll go over that in a second, but it is always good to have more, more workers to do more things. But then they start diluting because you always get the peasants and you obviously want to draw the other people as often as possible because one, there's limited spots to build. So they're only really good at building. And once the building is all done, then they're, they're kind of like worthless. And again, you can still do stuff with them. You can still fight with them. You do still need them to go to some of the places on the board, but you don't want to get overwhelmed with them. So what was originally like an advantage actually becomes a negative. And so you may not want to do the actions of that section of the board. You want to go fight off the monsters. And in addition to victory points for fighting them, a lot of the monsters actually have rewards on them. So as you send your people off to fight the monsters, like this guy gives all of my red dudes, which are our clerics, a plus one attack. So I beat this guy, I tuck it under my board, and now all of my clerics are a little bit better at fighting. There's also like combos like if you send this comp if you send a white and a blue to go fight a monster then that group is at plus one because you can assign multiple of your workers to a single monster to add up their total combat value against the monster's combat value and then the bag building is actually how you get your workers so every player has a bag that you're going to have your workers in and early in the game you get to draw four workers out and then as the game progresses it gets to five and then it gets to six and you're going to put them into your tavern where they're readied and then assign them to the board so first you're assigned to building and leveling up and then you're assigning to either activate the buildings or go fight monsters 
And then as they progress and as you gain workers, then they go to your lodgings to rest. And it's basically like a, a holding area. So you draw them and put them into the tavern, you use them and they go to your lodging. And when your bag is empty, you take everything from your lodging and you put it back in your bag and the cycle starts over again. So as you're earning guys, you don't see them immediately, but that's again how your bag starts getting diluted is because you're drawing from the bag and you want to draw the good things out because again, you only get four early on and it goes up again. And then there also is the corruption, which are these little like worthless meeples that are just like you just draw them to negate a worker that turn. So you get four. If you draw one of these, you really have three usable workers. So it's like you're at a minus one and you start with three of them in your bag. And then as the game progresses and gets harder and the monsters get harder that you do like add more to your bag as the game goes on. So again, that, that dilution still is there. You're not just going to draw them early on and then never see them again. You get more and more in your bag, but some of these buildings you build can actually do some really cool stuff with them. So like the Holy house lets you spend, like you, you, you send a red worker here, one of your clerics, and that allows you to take all of the corruption out of your bag and put it into your lodging. And then if you have your house of mercy, you can send a cleric there. And then one of your meeples gets plus one attack for every corruption that is in your lodging. So that is a really cool combo that you can trigger. If one turn you send out a red guy to send all your corruption to your lodging, well, until your bag is empty and everything goes back into your bag, then you can send red guys over to the house of mercy and have like a super duper, like heavy hitting meeple. And that is a very basic overview of the game. You're going to be drawing workers from your bag, assigning workers to the board, building out the board, fighting off the monsters, all the while trying to get better meeples in your bag. You're trying to make the meeples that are in your bag better because you can level up your workers. They all start at level one. And then there are ways that you can actually sacrifice some of your victory points to get them to level two and then to level three, which not only makes them better at fighting, but also gives them really cool abilities. And there are always going to be six monsters on the board that you fight. So every turn part of the cleanup phase is you add a number of monsters to the board equal to the monsters that you killed that turn. So there is always going to be six monsters on the board, but where they are like accumulating changes because the monsters all have a location, one of the quadrants assigned to them. So you never really know where they're going to pop up because again, if you really want to go over here to the cathedral area, but there's a ton of monsters here. If you activate these abilities, then you may get one, like more peasants into your bag. And again, you may not want that dilution. And then you, you do kind of stack that monster deck with some of these, the Dark Council Arrives cards. And that's basically these four like really big baddies that you have in the game. And that's just a place to get a lot of points at the end of the game. It's kind of thematically like what you're building up to is you're fighting off all these monsters and then it gets to a certain point where you have to go off and fight the big bad bosses. So your monster deck is going to be the timer of the game. And once you draw the third Dark Council arrives cards, which is going to be in the top, like the last five cards of the game, then you have the ability to go and fight these guys. And there, it also signifies that there's only two rounds left of the game. So you want to get enough meeples in your bag and kind of slim down your bag enough because there is some ways to like call out meeples so that you can try to kind of try to get rid of those peasants. So you want to stack up combos, upgrade your guys so that in the last few turns, you can come over here and hit these guys that can be worth like 15, 16 points if you get the right combos going at the same time. So guys, if you can't tell, I am really fired up about this game. In the intro, I kind of alluded it to being a Lords of Waterdeep killer. And while I definitely think Lords of Waterdeep has its place, it's probably one of the best intro worker placement games I've ever played. It's a modern classic. It definitely stands the test of time. This game, like, it, it just kept making me go back to think Lords of Waterdeep. This is a great next step from there. If you love Lords of Waterdeep, this is a game that you definitely need to have in your collection. It's not really a killer because I'm not going to say it replaces it, but I definitely think it goes right there next to the shelf because you have the worker placement, you have like the theming 
of like your guild where you're trying to get these different group of guys but it definitely evolves to the next level where you have your different workers that can do different things and you're like you're collecting your guild but those are also your workers it's not separate from your workers it really just is a fantastic game this is one of those like mashups of mechanics with the worker placement the bag building and i say tower defense because you have like the different monsters in the different zones so it kind of feels like they're all coming in from different angles it's not like you have to like knock them back and get them to, to like stop them from breaking a certain threshold but you have the worker placement mixed with the fighting of the monsters so again bag building worker placement tower defense melded together in a fan fantastic game guys i cannot wait to see the final production of this game which is why i think that you definitely absolutely need to go back this one on kickstarter there's going to be a link to the kickstarter campaign down below or if you're already on kickstarter make sure you scroll up and click on that big old green button to back this game as long as you're clicking on links, I think you should also check out our link to Game Toppers, where we have this awesome tabletop. They actually have a Kickstarter coming up soon as well. So if you are looking to get a Game Topper for your gaming room, your table, wherever you game, I think you need a Game Topper. And your chance is coming up soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can have more information on that Kickstarter when it comes around. And also... So you'll never be bored.